Absolutely. As a freshman senator, this is his first year, guys. His first year, and these bills he's filing are amazing. As a freshman senator, he has filed three proposals to protect the Second Amendment rights of Oklahomans to keep and bear arms. He believes the Constitution provides clear protections to gun owners, but if lawmakers are not diligent, those protections can easily come under attack by proponents of big government. I, and I'm sure you do too, look, really look forward to hearing what he has to say today. Please join me in welcoming Senator Nathan Dom. What a crowd. Can you all hear in the back crying? You still here? Excellent. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming out. This has been great. Uh, obviously, we're here in support of the Second Amendment, and I am going to talk about that. But I like to start every speech by asking a question. And this is a trick question. I will give you fair warning with that. But how many of you know what the three branches of American government are as defined in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? If you're confident that you know, shout it out. Executive, legislative, and judicial. No, that is wrong. Those are the three branches of the federal government or the three branches of our state government. The three branches of American government as outlined in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are we the people, the states, and the federal government. We the people have an individual right to keep and bear arms. We the people gave certain rights to our states to act on our behalf. And we the people allow the states to give other enumerated rights to the federal government, specific enumerated rights and nothing else. So those are the three true branches of American government. And you have to understand that, to understand that this is an individual right. Don spoke about the, the D.C. law case in which the court got it right. There is a separation between the, the militia aspect of the Second Amendment and we the people. It says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, which is the second branch of government. Yeah. The individual right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. So that's the first branch, we the people. Yeah. References have also been made to the Tenth Amendment. It's a great amendment, but my, one of my favorite amendments is the Ninth Amendment. It's very overlooked. How many of you know what the Ninth Amendment says? About uh, one? <laughs> All right, it says, the enumeration in this Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Shall not be construed. What does construed mean? Interpreted. How many times do we hear, well, the Constitution must be interpreted? Unfortunately for them, the Ninth Amendment says it shall not be interpreted. It says the enumeration of certain rights, the listing of a number of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage the other rights reserved to we the people. Yeah. The Second Amendment, it is not a constitutional right. It is a God-given right protected by the Second Amendment. If a government can give you a right, a government can take it away. And our government cannot take away this right because it is an individual right and it shall not be infringed. I know that there's a lot of people, I've gotten in a few debates since presenting my bills. A lot of liberals say, well, what about the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution? Article 6, clause, uh, Section 2, what does it say? Everybody says, well, it says that the Constitution, all federal laws, and all treaties are the supreme law of the land. But that's not what it says. If you read it, it says, the Constitution and all laws of the United States made in pursuance thereof. A law that violates the Constitution is not a law. It is unconstitutional. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, not Obama's executive orders, not his executive actions, not laws passed by Congress. If it violates the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment reigns supreme. And that's what we're here to say. That's what this legislation does. I encourage you all, today, Today is not a call to arms. For all the media out there, this is not a call to arms. This is a call to action. You need to get involved. Like I said, I am a freshman senator, so it's going to be much more challenging to get my bills in committee, through committee, on the floor and voted through. I have Senate Bill 548, which is the Second Amendment Preservation Act. I have Senate Bill 401, which deals with gun-free school zones and, and the, the current loophole that the federal government can convict somebody that's a thousand feet away 
of a felony. You could be three streets away from the edge of a school and still be convicted of a felony for openly carrying, which is within the law of Oklahoma. That's wrong. That needs to be addressed. And then I also have 552, which allows for, for carrying a vehicle in your vehicle for self-protection. The courts have ruled that your vehicle is an extension of your home. You don't have to have a permit to have a gun on your, in your property on your home for protection. You shouldn't have to have a permit to be able to protect yourself in your vehicle as well. But I encourage you all, don't just take my word for it. Please read the bill. If you read the bill, I guarantee you will have one up on most of the senators and representatives here at the legislature. So please read the bill before you just sign on to it. Read all this legislation. There's many things you can do to get involved. We have precinct meetings coming up. I don't care what party you're a member of. I don't look at just party, but you need to get involved. We can change both parties from the grassroots level. So get involved. Go to your precinct meetings. Start yeah. contacting your, your representative, your state senator. If they hear from five constituents, five people that live in their district, it can change their vote. With all the people here, we should be able to contact every state rep, every state senator, and let them know to support these bills. So please, get actively involved. Get informed. I lived overseas, grew up as a missionary, like you said, and I, in, in Romania, it was illegal for anyone but police or military to own any sort of weapon, even a, even a handgun. Strange thing about that, there were certain areas of town that I would drive through where you'd see people, uh, unsavory characters, walking around with submachine guns. Well, how is that possible if it was illegal? Because when you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. People need to be aware of that. We heard the arguments about open carry. Oh, if we have open carry, it'll, it'll be guns, it'll be, you know, blood in the streets. It'll be just like the Wild West. Well, here's the interesting thing about the Wild West. It wasn't that wild. We have a Hollywoodized version of what the Wild West was. Everybody thinks about the OK Corral. But let's not forget, the OK Corral was law enforcement shooting criminals who they were going to arrest. Does that still happen today? Before open carry took place? Were there still law enforcement incidences where they had to shoot and fire upon criminals? Yes. So open carry, we haven't had the blood in the street. They're going to use those same arguments with all this. But the Second Amendment is the individual right to keep and bear arms. I want to leave you with a few quick quotes. One of them is rather long, so I wrote it down. But this one says, Laws that forbid the carrying of arms disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. Such laws make things worse for the assaulted and better for the assailants. They serve rather to encourage than to prevent homicides, for an unarmed man may be attacked with greater confidence than an armed man. And you know who said that? That was Thomas Jefferson over 200 years ago. It's still the same today. These gun laws, these restrictions, these executive orders would not have stopped the massacre at Sandy Hook. All they do is they punish law-abiding citizens. So that's why we are in opposition to this. Now this Monday, President Obama is going to be sworn in for his second term. I figured that was the reaction I would get in this crowd. But it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day as well. And he is going to use some quotes from Martin Luther, I'm sure. So I want to leave you with two quotes from him. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are not going to stand for this injustice. Another quote that he said was, Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Now I'm willing to give the president the benefit of the doubt and believe that this is just sincere ignorance and not conscientious stupidity. But I'm here to say no matter what it is, we in Oklahoma will not stand for it. The Second Amendment reigns supreme. Shall not infringe means shall not infringe. It doesn't mean shall infringe by executive order, executive action, laws of the legislature. It means shall not infringe. And that's what we're going to stand on here in Oklahoma. Thank you all for coming on show and support. If you like this video, please favorite, like, thumbs up, share, and subscribe, and leave your comments. But whatever you do, let's wake up some sheeple.